Today's video is going to start a little bit differently from normal. I'm going to walk you through a visualization exercise that I would like you to imagine in your head. So first and foremost, I want you to think about yourself in your workplace and next to you, I want you to imagine what looks and appears to be another colleague, another coworker, except this colleague is a robot controlled by an AI. Now, a few core things to know about this AI, first and foremost, is that it has all the knowledge of humanity, all the knowledge of the internet, all the knowledge of every faculty of study, top scientists, top politicians, top historians, every area of knowledge is jammed into its brain. It can maintain millions of simultaneous conversations. It can produce content, millions of characters a second. It doesn't even need to type. It achieves ultimate fulfillment from the work that it's doing. It never needs to stop. And it's likely 10 to 100 times more physically capable than you could ever dream of being. Now, you might say to me, James, that sounds like it's straight out of a sci-fi film. I think you've gone insane. And all I have to say to that is that you should go and watch OpenAI's latest announcement about ChatGPT 4.0. Now, obviously, it's not that. And if you haven't seen the announcement yet, then I implore you to watch it. It's linked in the description down below. But what used to be straight out of a sci-fi film is now a reality that we will almost certainly have to confront within our lifetimes. It could be even 30 years away, not even far away. And suddenly that visualization exercise becomes the reality. Now, the implications of that are absolutely wild. They are almost unconceivably vastly different from anything we could have possibly pictured. And, you know, I was talking to my friend about it this morning and his, he's a smart guy, only comment was that it's scary. And I completely agree. What has gone from being a sci-fi film has potentially become, you know, a very near reality. And in this video, I'm going to discuss what I believe to be the future of AI and also how I think it will affect society, how it will affect individuals, how it will affect you and me, everything you should know about it. Now, some of the stuff that I talk about might sound pretty wacko schmacko, and I might also look like the guy on the internet that thinks that he can predict the future. And I think it's a great point. I am just giving you my perspective, but as someone who lo loves to have an existential crisis, I watch this video and, you know, it's really just absolutely giving me something. It's just, you, ha you cannot ignore it. Now, I'm going to present the future of AI in three phases. The first phase, I feel like we are currently moving into and the second and third phases, I will describe some of the core characteristics of them throughout the video. In addition to what society is going to look like, once again, how they're going to affect you and me and what you need to know so that you are not, you know, severely ill affected by the changes we're about to experience. If we think about evolution, innovation is a rapid process and it's exponential. These things happen faster than ever, you know, a hundred thousand years of human evolution has brought us to today, but it feels like a majority of the changes have happened in the last 300 years. And that's just going to get even faster. And AI is going to be the face of that change, in my opinion. Anyway, as always, let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts on the matter are. And if you enjoyed the video, smash the like and subscribe buttons. Now, let's start off talking about phase one. We, in my opinion, have touched on phase one with the release of OpenAI's latest video. And to give people a picture of what phase one might look like, I actually think that the movie Her has a really interesting depiction of it. If you're unfamiliar with the movie, essentially a guy has an unfulfilling human to human relationship. And so he starts dating an AI that is in almost every sense equivalent to OpenAI's latest announcement video. It's you know, just slap a face on it and it's the same thing. Absolutely crazy. It almost feels like they use Scarlett Johansson's voice for that announcement. It's mind boggling. Now, the interesting thing about the film 
you know, obviously the relationship is with the AI and I think that will genuinely be commonplace going forward. We can already see it with technology such as character AI already and the loneliness epidemic, instead of find your match, now you can just build it. Uh, but that's not the point or the core thing that I will, will affect society. I think that in the film, the guy is working as someone who writes letters between humans because humans are too lazy to do it. That's his job. And that's actually something that large language models are very efficient at. And so there is no shot he would have that job. It's just, you know, he, that man is going to be on his bum unemployed. And I think that that is one of the core traits of phase one is that as the AI becomes rapidly more competent, more and more individuals are going to be either unable to compete and will be made redundant. And I think that's a really tough reality uh, for us to swallow. And I think that things that will make it worse is ignorance. If you either choose to resist the change or are unable to stay informed, education is core here. Being able to evolve with the change and incorporate it into your workflow is going to be absolutely critical. Now, one thing that happens is that since being able to stay informed is so linearly dependent to how enabled you are to gain access to education, you know, we end up with large social divides. So, you know, if you grew up in a low decile, low socioeconomic area where you are, you are not able to afford, you know, the luxury of education, then that could be challenging. And I think that these social divides quite potentially will grow with this innovation as people are made redundant, are replaced. And the other challenging thing is that at the moment it exists on an individual level. The guy in the film, as much as I say he'd be unemployed, and quite potentially he would be, he now has to go live with that. And that's, how does he do that? You know, he's just suddenly out of a job. What is he to do? And I think that's going, potentially phase one could actually be the most challenging for us, you know, as a society on a whole, where people are individually affected, their families are affected, uh, as they are made redundant by, you know, AI that is now able to do their job. Now, I think that... You know, this is the core trait of phase one as we experience this innovation. And I think, you know, the only thing that could potentially moderate the rate of change is governments and legislation. However, they are, these tech companies innovate like there is no tomorrow and governments are pretty slow to make effective change and often being informed. They don't, you know, if we look at Facebook, that just blew up and there was nothing to control it. It just happened. You know, and then governments are like, wow, we should, you know, after the fact has already happened, we should, we should probably do something about that, but it's, not, it's too late. Now, the other thing that is, could potentially limit the rate of change is, you know, the, our ability to innovate with physical technology because AI, as much as it's like a software, uh, is entirely dependent on the capabilities of hardware. Uh, so, you know, potentially governments could you know, regulate the sale and innovation of uh, tensor processing units, which are the most effective processing units for building large language models. Anyway, I digress. The point is, is that phase one is characterized by in unemployment on an individual level. And I think that the most critical thing you can do is stay informed and learn how you can evolve and adapt and incorporate the technology, leverage it to your advantage. And I think that will you know, help throughout phase one. Now, phase two, I think that this could be 20 to 30 years away. I think that it will be right around the corner and it will catch people off guard. You know, every year we'll get a more crazy announcement from OpenAI and then it will be here. And I think that phase two is when we realize the visualization exercise from the start of the video. When that person sitting next to you has all of those capabilities and so much more, employment will cease to exist. Humans, you know, a lot of people might think that capitalism, these people are greedy, they're just going to make us work even harder to be productive. That is not going to be the case. Maybe in phase one that will exist. In phase two, there is no use case where humans can even you know, have a fraction of the value that the AI, they could just duplicate the AI. They don't need you. You introduce human error. It's difficult to manage and coordinate humans. You know, like 
we're just not going to have jobs on a societal level. Employment will just stop for the most part, for most people. The average person is made unemployed in the average job, you know, and this affects every industry. This is education, tech, software, programming, engineering, accounting, lawyers, you know, graphic design, construction, physical jobs, everything can just be replaced because we will just have an AI that is more exceptional at completing these tasks in every single way. Now, a core thing that I think is important to remember, there's actually two core things. The first thing is that if we think, you know, ideologically about innovation, innovation exists to improve the quality of life. And in my head, once again, this is ideological, a lot of these films become very dystopian quite quickly, but in my head, AI, unemployment should be the goal, theoretically, because we should be able to have the, the fruits of the labor without having to do the labor because the AI does the labor. So we can be unemployed, and I think that governments will come in and introduce a social welfare system uh, because you can't just have a whole population un unemployed, unable to you know, feed their, their families. Uh, so we'll have social welfare, and I think that when everyone is unemployed, then you know, it might, it could actually potentially be a good thing. It just totally is very dependent. And I think that the one advantage of everyone being unemployed is that when people on a whole, you know, it, it's not, it's no longer an individual level. It's a, it's a societal issue, which is when governments are forced to act and bring in systems such as social welfare. So, you know, we experienced this mass unemployment and I think that's going to be, you know, the defining characteristic of this phase is when we're actually sitting next to these crazy AIs that are just better than us. Now, phase three is, you know, as we talk further into the future, this could be, this could still be only 50 years away, even less. The margin for error in terms of the prediction becomes greater. So, you know, in terms of being able to conceptually foresee what this future could look like, it's hard to say exactly, but... I think that phase three is characterized when we achieve something known as the this singularity in the realm of computing. Now, for those unfamiliar with what the singularity represents, it kind of comes down to evolution. If we look at human evolution, you know, each iteration takes probably 20 years, maybe even less back in the day, you know, until you are able to reproduce and produce offspring. That's the evolutionary iteration. Every iteration evolves. Now, currently, the, techno the technology we're producing, the AIs we're producing, are also, the iterations are implemented by humans. So it's still a human-based iteration process, which means that, you know, how quickly can it evolve? It's still incredibly fast. However, the singularity is the moment at which the AI is able to self-iterate. Now, where humans take 20 years, however long that process is to create an iteration, fund conceptually an AI that runs on a computer based system, a processing based system, can compute millions of evolutions in seconds. Now, if I were to get you to tell me what humanity looked like in a million years, you just couldn't conceive it. It's unimagin it's literally unimaginable. And Suddenly, for AIs that can evolve that quickly based off just sheer computer power, we cannot conceive how incredibly advanced they could become in such a small, you know, snap my fingers. It could literally be that quickly. It's crazy. And at this point, this is where everything goes, you know, this is just me having a, my best guess at what the world could possibly look like, but it's crazy because it could even be in our lifetime. You know, at this point, the AI is just, it, we are on it. It is sentient. It is unequivocally sentient. It is better than you and I in every single way. Uh, and I think at this point, we're all on a social welfare system. You know, if we look at why humans are the top dog of society or, you know, globally, you know, amongst the animal kingdom, it's because 
of our ability to evolve and adapt. We do a great job of it. But compared to something that can evolve and adapt in a microsecond, we are no longer the top dog. And so I think the interesting things about that period will one be that it, I think it will absolutely be limited based on, you know, the innovation of technology in terms of the hardware. That will be interesting because, uh, you know, currently it's like crazy amounts of data just to image a brain. And so for their brains to be that infinitely complex, you know, I imagine the hardware will also have to be there. But I think as, you know, we will no longer be the top dog. We'll be like a pet allowed to coexist only whilst we are able to contribute some random value to an AI society. Uh, as soon as we need the same resources they do, I think that'll become a complicated time. But, you know, this is, I'd love to hear what you guys think the AI future could look like. Uh, you know, I think that if we're able to live indefinitely, there will be population crisis because even with all the resources, you know, the earth only has so much resource to offer. So how do you control populations? I think another interesting thing about uh, AI is there's a lot of movies or ideas that we would be enslaved. And I personally don't think that'll be an issue because I imagine that an incredibly advanced intelligence would have, you know, the same ethical guidelines that we are kind of working on at the moment, just a more refined version, most likely. And the other, th so I think they would have an ethical, you know, concern employing us as slave labor. But the other interesting thing about AI is that they can we find work hard. You know, the average person struggles to contribute to society. And I think that that's a product of biology. Our experience is purely just evolutionary based biology. You're tricked by chemicals in your brain to think you perceive something that you potentially enjoy or don't enjoy. And we can't just go and, you know, fiddle some switches and change that to make me enjoy eating my vegetables. But an AI can absolutely program itself to find fulfillment out of completing a task that is, you know, contributes to the growth of society. So I think that in terms of having, you know, workers, I think that AI would have a much more effective chance at having a completely constructive collaborative society than humanity ever would. But who can really say about the distant future? I think that the, the most important thing to understand from this whole video is that the change is happening. And I, you know, once again, I might sound like a crazy person and I totally respect that if that's your opinion, because it is wild. Uh, and this is me just having my existential crisis in front of a whole lot of people. But it is so important that as things are changing, which they are already, that we stay informed and we don't shy away from what the future could look like to be able to plan and adequately prepare for you know a variety of outcomes means thinking about them that's what this video is it's giving you context or perspective to a reality that we could potentially see in our lifetimes anyway i hope this video has given you something interesting to think about i know that it's going to keep me up at night. Once again, I'd love to hear what you guys think about the topic at the moment. Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, if you've enjoyed the video, smash the like and subscribe buttons and I'll catch you later. Peace. Learning to code? If so, be sure to check out the learn to code roadmap or dive straight in with these videos. That's a good one.